if you're watching from Indonesia or anywhere around the world. As we know that last year, Manchester City have recorded a spectacular performance, which they able to get the treble trophy. And now we actually got a chance to have a talk with the, um, the legend himself, which Mr. Uh, Sean Wright Phillips, to talk about the Manchester City performance, especially for the tro treble trophy gain from uh, last year, which this time is on the uh, treble trophy uh, tour in Indonesia. Hello, uh, Sean, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Sean. So, um, can you tell us about the purpose for this treble trophy uh, tour for Manchester, Manchester City here in Indonesia? I think to have the trophies here is it's an extra added bonus. I think in general, Manchester City as a club would have come here at some point to meet the supporters that are here, build the brand, glow the club, and um, grow with each other sort of thing. But to have the treble here is, is a phenomenal achievement. You know what it took. If you go back to last season, the game at the Etihad where Jack makes it 2-1, and then you look at the Liverpool game, not at the Etihad, at the Emirates, sorry, and then you look at the Liverpool game at the Etihad, where um, Kevin De Bruyne scores just after half-time. All those key moments in the season led to this particular point now, and hopefully the way they've started the season this year um, is looking very positive again. All right. Um, and we're really excited as well that um, we, ha we get a chance to see the, tour, the trophy here in Indonesia. And one of the, the big moments, actually, for the, uh, from last year, it is the uh, you, uh, Champions League. The trophy, right? You, this is the first Manchester City uh, trophy for the Champions League. What do you think about it? It's a massive achievement. I think over the years, when they've got to the final, they've lost it. When they've been knocked out by Real Madrid in the quarters or the semis, it, it didn't matter that I thought in all of those games that they've been in the Champions League, I think they played phenomenally well. I think sometimes there hasn't been a bit of luck on their side, and or there's been decisions that's gone against them. And I think this year, they last year, they overcome everything. I think every obstacle that was thrown at them along the way, that they found a way to get past it. And that was even down to the finals. They, they found a way to win. And I think that is the first step to hopefully many more of those trophies. Okay, it must be a really um, big moment for Man City, the clubs and also the fans all over the world to see this moment, right? Um, yeah, it's a massive moment. It's a mark in history, I think, for the club. And it's, it's, it's something that hasn't been done and now it's been done and I think once it's been done once I'm not saying the next time's easier but I think it, it it shows them that it can be done and what it takes to do it I think it, it helped the fact that we won the Premier League and then you go on to win the FA Cup and I think that knock-on effect of just winning that adrenaline in and just taking it through and that they gritted their teeth at times in the Champions League finals and it, it turned out to work in the first in, in their favour sorry Okay, um, you've you've played with the uh, big clubs from 2000, the year 2000 until 2000 until uh, you retired, right? And then like Chelsea, Manchester City as well, uh, and then uh, many many clubs. And could you tell us about the pressure or the experience that you had during the uh, from the academy in Manchester City all the way to playing in Premier League and also in uh, Champions League as well? I think for me, it may be a bit different to a lot of other kids, especially for my brother as well. Um, I think we've always grown up with pressure. I think people's always expected us to be good footballers because of who our dad is. Um, so there's always been that element of pressure surrounding us. But I think in general, there, there's a certain also that element that if you play for a big club, pressure is a given. You're expected to try and win stuff or expected to be in that position where you have an opportunity to win or so that's just something that comes with it. I think if you want to be a fantastic player or be among the elite or play for your country, you have to learn to deal with that pressure. And I think it's something that City do fantastically well. It is uh, truly remarkable for the, for the playing big teams and it must be really hard. And also, you, uh, I want to ask about this um, experience that you get, especially um, playing big teams uh, and also 
uh, playing in the European uh, teams and this is the, uh, you as the uh, famous for this the, your speed your agility yet you have you you have uh, compared to the Euro other Europe, Europe, European players you have a, a smaller build I, uh, I'm quite tall actually yes <laughs> indeed <I'm tall. laughs> so, <laughs> so um, no. what do you think like how do you uh, encounter that especially because this is similar challenge that Indonesian footballers have uh, to compete in the international level well I learned how to um, challenge it from a very, very young age. I think when I was younger, growing up in South London, and you're playing football on the grass with kids that are 19 and you're only 13, uh, they're a lot bigger than you anyway, and my speed was always a factor, so I was very used to getting kicked around for a long time, and from then I had to figure out and re understand that I'm not physically as strong as them, so I have to find another way around that. And that was me using either, like you said, my agility side of it, or thinking quicker than them and I think you learn now and football's completely different now that although there is contact it's nothing like the old days you can get a yellow card for a shirt tug you would never have got that before so I think a lot of the clever players and the tricky players are a bit more protected so they, they only have to worry about passing and moving and I think they play football a very the simple way as you see Pep's teams a lot of it's pass move find another space be in a position to um, to get the ball again. So now I think is is it's better for smaller players in respects of they're a lot more protected. So all they need to do is show that they're worthy enough in a way. I think show the passion, the desire, and just enjoy. I just always enjoyed working hard for, especially my team and the fans. All right. So the hard work, the uh, the, the way of play is really matters to be able to adapt. Yeah, you, you always have to be able to adapt because the player you come up against is never going to be the same the weekend after the player you've just played sort of thing. So he brings a different challenge all the time. And I think as a footballer, especially as a winner, it was that was one thing I enjoyed. It wasn't just about attacking football. It was, OK, how am I going to outsmart this player now to get on? Don't get me wrong, it doesn't always go according to plan, but I always gave it a good go. All right. And the Manchester City have enormous fans all over the world, it's in Southeast Asia and also in Indonesia. Um, what do you think about the performance for Manchester City, especially um, that how they get the fans so big, especially here in Indonesia? It's a lovable club. <laughs> once, you, once you're in love with City, it's just something that you, you can't get rid of sort of thing. It's just there forever. Like I moved from London at the age of 16 and before I was 18, it's the first club I've actually irritated me if they lost a game. Like before, I just followed whoever dad played for, but now like, I know what it feels like as a fan, especially now that I've retired, the, the roller coaster of emotions, you should say. So for me, that's, that's the main thing. It, 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 once you fall in love with it, it's just gonna get bigger and bigger, bigger because all that happens is you'll pass it down to your kids or they will pass it to their cousins and then their friends start watching it and then they'll just fall in love with the players and the style of play that City is. I think you look at Barcelona, as much as they've had fantastic players, everybody watched Barcelona because of the sexy football that they played. People just enjoyed seeing that class go to work. All right, so basically it's all about the the way you play, right? And then also the throw yeah, that the, you mentioned it's the, before. Yeah, totally, it's the energy, <laughs> man. <laughs> like, you, there's a lot of people that watch Brighton because they don't support them, they just enjoy the way Brighton plays. And Man City does that just the same on a global stage. All right. And also, I have a um, curiosity about this, like, you know, the rotation of football, because uh, usually uh, the European teams are the, um, the big star are there, but like, Right now, they're shifting kind of like to China, to uh, to Asia, and also to Saudi Arabia. What do you think about that? You go where football takes you. I think at the end of the day, when it comes to a certain point in your career, you, you know what you want to do and what it is you want from the game in general. I think people will choose America for lifestyle. Some people will choose Saudi Arabia. Maybe people might say it's because of the money. In another place, it might be a project to him to help that league become bigger and put that league on the map in respects of with France and 
Belgium. There's no reason why it can't happen and why it shouldn't happen. So I think as a player, it just depends on what your focus is and what you want to do. Mm, I see. All right. Um, is there anything you want to add to the fans from uh, City Today Tours? Um, I'd just like to say on behalf of myself, obviously Sean Wright Phillips, and on behalf of Manchester City and all the staff that made this happen, um, the welcome here from everybody in Indonesia has been fantastic and looking forward to getting to know a lot of the fans on Saturday and seeing a lot of things over the few days that I'm here. So thank you very much from everyone. All right, thank you very much, uh, Sean. And that was Sean Wright Phillips from Manchester City, which is a legend of the team. And um, I'm very excited to be able to talk with him. And that was his, um, his share, especially for the fans for the uh, Indonesian fans and Southeast Asian fans. Reski Anasto and Hanif Abdu for us today. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. <laughs>